right. Now, let me wash the brush and we'll just blend that out. And as you know, we wash our brushes with odorless thinner and we have a lot of fun. Just shake off the excess <laughs> and beat the devil out of it. All right. All right, hey everyone, this is Omar Alvarado of All About Rush yet again, coming at you with another ranking video. Uh, we like lists, we like to rank stuff, and I find that doing these rankings are somewhat controversial, which I like. I like to stir up a little drama, a little of an opinion pool, so to speak, people coming at me telling me that I'm right, that I'm wrong. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So I'm going to ruffle some feathers again, and I'm going to do another ranking. So... We're going to do like we've done before, the tier system here. We have five tiers, uh, as you see in front of you. We have the elite tier. We have the superb tier. We have the great tier. We have the good tier and the it's still rush tier. That seems to be uh, pretty accurate. And all of the albums of rush are at the bottom. This time we're going to rank the album covers the way they look. So this time we're not going to have... Anything to do with the sound of the albums, I've done that already. Uh, we're not going to have anything to do with the, if I like, you know, how, how much I like the records. You know, my favorite record to my least favorite record. We've done that already. This time, like I said, just the album covers, which ones I like more than others. And we'll see how closely they relate to how much I like the record. Now, I'm going to ignore everything about the record except the way the album cover looks. Shout out to Hugh Syme, who did most of these album covers. They are fantastic. But we're going to see which ones I like, which ones I don't like. And, uh, you know, in the previous two rankings, uh, 2112 got a bad rap from me. <laughs> Not intentionally. Uh, but I didn't realize that, you know, based on how much I liked the record and also how much what I thought of the way the records sounded, uh, 2112 for me was pretty low. So we'll see how it fares this time. And like in the previous two times, I had no, pre I have not prepared at all for this ranking. I just sat down and pressed record. So I have this ranking system in front of me. And as I review each cover, I'm going to have the cover itself displayed on the screen. So we can kind of, you know, so you can see what I'm looking at. And you now I'll talk a little bit about the cover and, you know, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Try not to spend too much time on it. And, um, you know, I'll put it on whatever tier I think it belongs in. And we'll see how it turns out. We'll see if what I'm thinking is actually what's going to be the result in front of us. So before we get into that, I just wanted to say, uh, announce that I have a new Patreon page. The All About Rush Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, help me. With the production, you know, increase the production production value of the channel, which uh, I, I'm always hoping to do every time I create a new video. And if you like the topics that I discuss, uh, hopefully you can support me on the Patreon channel. And that will help this channel, All About Rush, a great deal. There'll be exclusive content there as well that won't be found on the YouTube channel. So if you decide to uh, support the channel in that way, you'll get those perks but mostly it would be to support the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, let's get on with the ranking. Okay, so before we start the rankings, I just wanted to mention what I want to exclude what from the rankings and also just what I'm going to include. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to include in these rankings are the studio albums. That's it. So I'm not including the live albums. I'm not including any compilation records like archives or... Uh, Chronicles, and I'm not including any retrospective covers. I'm not including any of the um, anniversary edition covers, nothing like that. I'm only ranking the studio album covers. That's what's going to be in this ranking. All right, so as we did previously, we're going to start with the debut album. It's going to start at the elite level. So we're going to just put it up there right now. When Rush came out in 1974, the debut album, it, you know, the album cover is pretty good. Um, I, I like this album cover. Um, I'm not crazy about it, but I do like it. I'm not crazy about the logo, even though it is part of the 
uh, all about Rush logo, <laughs> ironically. But uh, I do like the way it's busting out. Like this is a this is us. This is a new group. Uh, listen to us. We're pretty good. So it's pretty simple cover, but it's not a bad cover. So we'll put it right there in the elite level where it belongs right when it came out on its debut. So next came 1975's Fly By Night. And I know already that I like it more than the debut album uh, cover. This a cover is pretty awesome. The infamous or the famous owl, the rush owl from 1974's Fly By Night. Great looking album cover. Great looking bird. Those uh, those owl eyes just piercing at you. You know, the, the owls do fly by night. <laughs> um, anyway, without discussing the topics of the record, which is not the focus of this discussion, I'm just going to say that I really like this cover. The blue col the blue colors in it as well. You know, the nightly colors. It's It's pretty cool. It's reminiscent of the 70s and the very, very creative covers that came out during that time, not just by Rush, but other bands as well. So anyway, as of right now, Fly By Night is the best album cover. So here comes now Caress of Steel, 1975. Caress of Steel, let me put it right here for the moment. Caress of Steel is one of my favorite records of all of Rush's catalog. Really like it a lot. And I do really like the album cover a lot as well. It's very mysterious. You have what, what we believe to be the necromancer there uh, referenced in the record. Looking into his prism, just, you know, being his evil self. Got the snakes on the side. I would say the orangey or bronze-like hue of the record gives the record uh, kind of a mysterious look. When I saw this for the first time, I was like, you know, you know, what's going on here? Who's what is what is this? You know, very mysterious. Now, I do like this album cover better than the debut album cover. Uh, do I like it better than the Fly By Night cover? Um, I'm going to say yes, I do. Again, this has nothing to do with the music. It has nothing to do with the sound of the album. I just it's a more intriguing album cover, maybe because of my like of fantasy. When I was a youngster, I read a lot of fantasy, Lord of the Rings, that kind of thing. And this reminds me of that. So I'm going to say as of this moment, Rush, Caress of Steel is my favorite album cover. So then here comes 2112, the much maligned by me, 2112. And I find my it's hard to for me to even say that, hard to hear. But watch the other rankings of the albums and you'll see what I mean. This is not a bad album cover. I don't dislike it at all. Uh, I'm not crazy about the Red Star. You know, it has a negative connotation. People tend to confuse it with the, I forget what it's called, but the the, the upside down star, uh, which is, you know, a negative religious symbol. But, you know, in this case, that's not what it's about at all. It's just about the symbol of the Red Star of the Federation. Anyway, so it's a pretty plain album cover, Rush 2112, and then that. Now... I didn't notice some of these things before because the red star really stands out. But, you know, there is the the galaxy of stars in the background. So it does have a spacey vibe. And it seems like the red star also is on on water. So there's kind of like a reflection of sorts there. You can see the reflection of 2112 kind of in the water. But how much do I like it? Okay, so I definitely like it more than the Rush debut album. I I don't I'd like the Fly By Night album cover better than the 2112 album cover. So I'm going to put it here as the third best as of right now. So here it is so far. Now comes 1977 A Farewell to Kings. Uh I really like the A Farewell to Kings record. Well, it's a good record. <laughs> And um, the album is very intriguing. That I mean, it's very busy, the album cover. And it's very creative. Um, when I saw this for the first time, it was also very confusing to me. I, mean, I was, I was a pretty young when I saw this. Um, you know, I have the guy sitting in the chair there. Don't know if he's real or not. A lot of destruction. I'm sure there's a lot of references 
there are some re- references to that in in the songs, of course. But how about how do I like it compared to the other album covers? All right, so I do like this album cover more than Twenty One Twelve. <laughs> that I know for certain. So I'm going to this will bump the Rush debut album down to the superb tier. So because you can only have four albums per tier. That's how I've designed it. There's five tiers. Five times four is 20. So we know that A Farewell to Kings will be in the elite level. Now, do I like it more than Fly By Night? I already know that I don't. I, I do like that Fly By Night cover a lot. That owl is pretty impressive. So I'm going to put it there in the third spot. So as of right now, 1977, when A Farewell to Kings came out, if I was, a, well, I was alive then, but if I had these albums... This is how I would see them. I would still like the Crest of Steel album cover as my favorite so far uh, because of its references uh, or reminders of my like of fantasy. So that is that stays at number one. So this is what we're looking at so far. Farewell to Kings comes in at number three. Next up, we have Hemispheres, liked by most fans. We'll put it here for now to bring it up to this, for discussion. I got to tell you that I was never impressed by the by the naked guy, not from twenty one twelve, um, and not here. I I just think that it's there more to impress and shock. So you know that's my feeling about that. Um, but you know, I think this is actually as good as the record is, and we're not discussing the music. But the album cover to me is kind of plain. You know I'm not, you know I'm not crazy about it. Um, it is interesting. The logo, the Rush logo is pretty cool. I like that. But I'm not crazy about the album cover in this case. Again, we're not we're not discussing the content of the record, just the album cover art. And I'm going to say that I like it better. I'm telling you that the debut record is not that great. <laughs> um, that cover is not that great. It's pretty plain. But actually... For those of you who love 2112, I'm going to say that I actually like the 2112 album cover more than the Hemispheres cover. So I'm going to put it in the fifth spot ahead of the Rush debut album. So this is what our ranking is looking like so far. 2112 is holding its own so far in the elite level. Next comes Permanent Waves. Now, Permanent Waves... Very interesting, very uh, a favorite of many, many, many people. And that album cover is extremely interesting. We have the pretty woman in the front and the wind blows her skirt. That's a pretty famous, uh, <laughs> famous cover there. And a lot of symbolism going on in this record cover. It is a very interesting cover. And I'm going to put it put it pretty high up there. Uh, I'm going to I know that for now. I am going to put it on the elite level. So that is going to knock 2112 down to the superb level. So I will put that here. Yes. And actually, no, that's wrong. There we go. Okay. 2112 down to the superb level. And I do like this Permanent Waves album cover more than A Farewell to Kings. I do. Let me put it ahead of Feral to Kings, like I said. Okay. I think it's it's more. I think it's because it's more relevant, uh, or I can relate to it more. Whereas the Farewell to Kings cover is kind of fantastical. I can relate more to to the Permanent Waves one. It's just very intriguing. There's just a lot going on there. You know, this destruction, and you got that guy waving in the background, and there's just things happening there that I'm sure that if I keep looking uh, throughout the cover, I'll find new things every time I look at it, which is just that busy. Now, as you can see, the Fly By Night and Crest of Steel albums, album covers are holding their own. They're pretty impressive. Love those covers. So this is how the ranking goes so far. Next comes Moving Pictures and... We are again going to ignore the music. And bef- 
actually, I'll rank this one, then I'll make a comment about other things relating to covers. Um, not song covers, album covers. This is the time when I started learning about Rush. This is when I discovered Rush, when Moving Pictures was out. So it's a very nostalgic to me, this cover. And it is a very, very good cover. Um, it's a, you know, moving pictures. So you have people that are moving pictures. The pictures are moving. <laughs> so, you know, there's a lot of symbolism going on here. This is an actual place. So, you know, I could relate to it more. as not like something like Caress of Steel, which is a, a fantasy story. And the pictures are pretty interesting. You see a reference to 2112 there as well. These covers, these pictures relate a lot to what's going on musically in the album as well. So like the other ones do, but this one does in a very special way. I do like this album cover quite a bit, but let's see which albums are better than this one. Now, again, I think Caress of Steel and Fly By Night are going to hold their own at number one and two. Those are very good. <laughs> I just love those album covers. And I'm going to say that I do like this album cover more less than the Permanent Waves album cover. So that's going to knock A Farewell to Kings down to the superb level ahead of 2112. And it will put moving pictures in the number four spot and in, in the elite level. This is pretty interesting. Um, just for kicks, I'm going to put on the screen from the previous rankings, the ranking of uh, my favorite records, one through eight at this point, and the ranking of my favorite sounding records, one through eight, compared to the album covers, one, to, one through eight. And I'll just put it on the screen. I won't talk about it. So you can see how these rankings compare based on what you're, what you're comparing. I think it's pretty interesting, the contrasts. Anyway, so this is my one through eight. So we have my favorite as of right now is Caress of Steel. Then Fly By Night is my second favorite, followed by Permanent Waves, Moving Pictures, A Farewell to Kings, 2112, Hemispheres, and the debut album Rush. All right, so moving on. Now next comes uh, Signals, which is one of my favorite records all around. But again, let's just talk about the album cover itself. When it came out, I thought it was pretty, uh, what is going on here? Actually, the, the logo for Rush here is one of my favorites. I love that. Uh, it's, it just looks like old and new. Old and new Rush. And, you know, I didn't even know what to make of it. But I, I do like the lettering, you know, the font that they use for for this album. The dog about to pee on the fire hydrant, <laughs> I guess, is a sense of foreboding. <laughs> I guess that's what. Maybe that's talking about. Yeah. So how do I rank it as far as, you know, comparing it to the other covers? I don't think this cover is a big deal. I mean, I really like it a lot because of what the album reminds me of as much as how much I like it and how much I like it. I like how it sounds. So I have to divorce myself from that. As far as an album cover, I, don't, I mean, I don't think it's really that great or that, you know, that appealing. I do know that the... Rush debut album is going to be bumped down to the great great tier, the great level, because this is going to be on the superb level as of right now. I do like this album cover more than the Hemispheres cover. Uh, I guess I'm just not that crazy about the Hemispheres cover. Do I like the 2112 album cover more? Yeah, I think I do. I think I like 2112 more. So I'm going to put Signals after 2112. Yeah, I think that's where that belongs. So... Poor debut Rush album. It's going to get pushed way down, I think. Uh, but, you know, these album covers are better. All right. So let's talk about Grace Under Pressure. Came out in 1984. And that is a fantastic album cover. This might be one of their best. Could be their best. Um, this one is really good. I'm going to put this one definitely belongs in the elite level. And I'm going to put it where it goes, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. Okay, this means that the Hemispheres album is going to be pushed down to the great level. It also means that the Moving Pictures album cover is going to be moved down to the superb level. 
Yes, because this album is going to go on the elite level. And I got to say, it's going to be first place as of right now. Such, I mean, this album cover is spectacular. I mean, you see the kind of like, looks like the head of a woman looking over a vast sea. But at the same time, if you look at the bottom right, it looks like the water is kind of close to you. When I, when I first saw this record, like when I was a kid, you know, that thing in the middle looked like just a, a kite, a flying kite of sorts. And you have the, the foreboding clouds and just the different colorings at the top. It just seemed like a lot of randomness going on, but that there was a purpose to that randomness. Um, the colors, like I said here, are absolutely spectacular. Love it. And it didn't, I didn't notice it at first, but then I saw the PG at the right towards the middle which signifies pressure over grace or grace under pressure name of the record. So yeah, this album cover so far uh, is my favorite of all of them. Next we have a fan favorite record power windows. Of course, we're just talking about the album cover and I know that a lot of people like this cover. I'm not crazy about it. I know there's a lot of symbolism there, and definitely a lot of it is related to what's going on in the record itself. But, you know, when I first saw it, I, I thought it was interesting because it was a new record. But I'm not crazy about the album cover. Let's just say that. So I think it's going to rank pretty low in my rankings of album covers. Actually, I think I know exactly where it's going to go. For me, it's a great album cover ahead of Hemispheres. And I'm kind of surprising myself because I didn't know a not that I dislike the Hemispheres cover, but it just, you know, I just think it's an OK cover. It's interesting. You know, it makes you think what's going on there. But, you know, I think there's just several album covers that are better. Now, like I mentioned, the Power Windows album cover. I even like the Signals album album cover more. I think it's cuter and more interesting. <laughs> but I, I just I'm not crazy about the Power Windows album cover. Looking at the ones that have come before it, I think the ones that came before it are just better album covers. Okay, so after Power Windows, we have Hold Your Fire. All right, uh, Hold Your Fire. I mean, that's a pretty boring album cover. And when it came out, I mean, I'm like, what's going on here? Um, yeah, I was pretty confused when it came out. After you get to know the album, you understand what those are there for, but not very imaginative uh, that I, you know, from what my first impression. And I think a lot of these album covers that came before definitely better, but I actually don't think it's its worst. It's the worst album cover because I think the fact that there are just three, three dots there, I'll call them dots or three balls there, red with shadows. You, you you wonder what is happening there. And I do think it's better than the Rush debut album cover because you knew exactly what you were getting with that. It's a debut album, debut band. And then they're, and they're called Rush. That's it. So you knew exactly what that was. At least with the Hold Your Fire cover made you think about, you know, why? Is it just this one? You know, the Power Windows record previously so different. I do like the fact that all of these covers are drastically different from each other. Very different. Just like the records themselves. Music wise are always very different, which is made one of the things that made the band so interesting. All right. I'm I'm kind of like procrastinating <laughs> where I want to put this album cover. I think I'm gonna put it definitely I'm gonna put it ahead of the debut album. This is gonna be a great album cover as of now you know what this is going to be interesting I actually as simple as this is i do like it more than the power windows album cover oh tr controversial yes <laughs> that's where i'm gonna put it um i'm not crazy about the power windows album cover i didn't like that kid and I, I didn't like it <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going to say because of how much the album cover for Hold Your Fire made me think about what's going on, that was interesting enough, at least. 
And then, the, you know, the power windows cover didn't do much for me. So, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. Next, we have Presto. Presto, great album. Very interesting. I, I do like this cover a lot. When it came out, I, I did think it was very interesting cover. Very interesting. Black and white cover there with the Rush logo being red. Rush used red a lot. Yeah, very interesting. So I think it's definitely better than great. It's at least a superb album cover with all of the bunnies on it. Um, so I'm going to right away move the Rush debut album down to the good level because that's what's going to happen. I do think it's better than any of the records in the cur currently in the great level. So that's going to bump Signals down to the great level. I feel kind of bad because Signals, I love that record so much. But anyway, it's album covers time. And Presto is better. Presto is better to me than the 2112 cover. Yeah, I think that's where it's going to go. It's going to go in the seven spot ahead of 2112. There's something about these records, well, not including the debut album, but the albums that came out early, Fly By Night, Caress of Steel, great covers. Um, A Farewell to Kings is, you know, is a very good cover. I really like the colors there as well. The the imagery of moving pictures. I mean, it's just great the way that is everything, how everything is placed. So um, deliberately, it works. And this cover, Presto, it's just, it's very unique. It's not something I would ever have expected Rush to put on their cover, uh, but it totally makes sense. Yeah, so I think it's it's right in the seventh spot. Okay, so now we have Roll the Bones from 1991. This was um, a very interesting cover. Yeah, when it came out, I didn't know what to make of it as well. That was kind of dark, like a you know dark and you know where is this where is the darkness going with this record? You know, with the skeletons and the sense of randomness not having control you know, it had negative vibes for me um you know great songs on there that's for sure but not a cover that i'm crazy i'm crazy about i can see why a lot of people like the cover but yeah it's not my favorite i would say that it will not even go in the superb level i would say i'm thinking about it again like I mentioned previously, I didn't prepare at all for this. I wanted to have a fresh perspective and I didn't want to have anything influence me until the moment I started talking about it. So I'm looking at this cover and it's it's looking to me like a lot of the covers, album covers that I like, I like them almost the same. So it's kind of difficult to pick which one I would like more. Like, for example, those great level, great tier album covers, there's almost not much difference in how much I like Hemispheres and Signals. Like that row is very, they all, I like them kind of all the same. And I think this album, Roll the Bones, this cover is kind of like that. But it is quite impactful. I'll have to, I'll give it that. So yeah, I think I'm going to definitely put it ahead of hold your fire so that means uh, that means hemisphere is going down down to the good level <laughs> i'm telling you i was never crazy about that cover um i think i do like it better than the hold your fire cover again this is purely subjective this is just me and hopefully the, the reasonings i'm using to put them in their spot these albums you know make sense but everybody's gonna have an opinion I know they're all coming. Um, do I like it more than the Signals album cover? Again, Signals, I like the I like the record a lot. So I have to make sure that the music and the way it sounds does not influence how I'm going to rank its cover. I'm going to ask this. Do I like this album cover more than the 2112 album cover? I'm going to say no. I think the battle is for that ninth spot here in the great level. Do I like 
roll the bones that cover more than the signals cover? Um, I'm going to say no. I'm going to put it there in the 10th spot. And as I did with the other rankings, when I finish and I look at every and see everything in its place, I'll give it a look over one more time and I'll determine if everything is where they belong. I did have to make some changes in the other two rankings, so this may not be any different. Uh, OK, so next comes counterparts. Uh, my previous rankings, I loved the album itself. And the sound is fantastic. But the cover, what do I think about the cover? I think the cover is pretty boring. Uh, I do like the lettering, the, the, the font that they used for the name Rush. I think that's pretty cool. And yes, there is symbolism involved here. And I think that's something that you got to take into consideration. Uh, but I do, I do think it's, you know, it's quite boring. There's not much going on there. Love the color of the album love that so let's see where would this go where am i going to put it so man this is tough it's really hard to not think of how much i like the record but i'm going to say that well here, here's the thing too when you look at an album cover it automatically reminds you of the content of the record, right? So it's difficult to divorce yourself from how much you like the sound or the songs on the record, right? And I'm trying as best as I can to not think of of the content. So, but I, I still think the album cover is interesting. I do like the way it's laid out, like the black around the, the bolt and the nut. I, I think when I saw it for the first time, I thought it was pretty, I thought it was interesting. But compared to these other albums, album covers, I mean, it's not that you know, impactful. Yeah, I think the battle, it's going to be ranked pretty low. It's going to be either on the great level or the good level. Uh, I've really been bashing the Hemisphere's cover. And it's not that I don't like it. I just like other album covers. I, I even put Hold Your Fire ahead of it. <laughs> um which I find, I don't know, I, I would come to that conclusion. We'll see if I keep it that way at the end. It's still Rush. They're all still Rush, at least. All right. So I think I do like this album cover more than Older Fire. I do. So I'm going to bring Power Windows down to the good level. That's going to annoy a lot of people, I think. And I'm going to put it behind Roll the Bones. I mean, I like, I mean, Roll the Bones is okay, that cover. And it's definitely better to me than the Counterparts cover. Yes, I think that's where it should go. Okay, here comes Test for Echo. I'm going to put it there for the moment. And this is a pretty cool album cover, I think. I really do. I really like it. Yeah, this might be one of their better ones. Uh, the imagery of the statue. And you know what? I did not notice this before. There is a person on that statue. <laughs> oh, no. There's one, two, at least three people. How about that? See, this came out in 1996. And what? However many years later it is, decades later, I didn't notice that there were people on there till right now. How about that? You know what? That's going to make it even put it even higher on this list. That that's really interesting. Uh, man, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm being blown away like right now. Um, all right. This is an elite level cover, I think. I mean, the imagery with the snow and the, the skyline, um, you know, the skies in the distance and up above. And there are people on this statue. I did. I did not know this. You know, pile of stones that looks like uh, like a person. OK, so since this album cover is going to be elite for the moment, I got to move a bunch of stuff. So that means hold your fire is going to go down to the good level. Twenty one twelve is going to go down to the great level. It's, it's 
2112 is fighting for its life. It wants recognition one way or another. Um, and then permanent waves. It's going to go down to the uh, superb level, which is that's still pretty good. Okay. Test for echo. An elite cover. Man, you know what? Wow. Uh, I'm going to put it number two for now behind Grace Under Pressure. Uh, Grace Under Pressure is a great cover. Uh, this test for Echo cover, though, I, I've just been blown away. I did not, I, you know, maybe someone had mentioned that in the past, but I didn't I didn't notice till right now that there are people on, on this boulder statue. All right. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. We'll see what I think in a bit. Okay, let's move along. Now we're going to talk about paper trails. And I'm using the remixed Vapor Trails cover. Uh, the reason I'm using the Vapor Trails remix cover is because Rush chose to remix it. And they're saying that this is the one we like. Album-wise, complete, like we're talking about the whole package. So that will be an asterisk on this video, on this ranking. Um, in the previous two videos, I chose to use the remixed version for those rankings. So for this one, I will continue on that vein. Yeah, I do like this. I, I like both covers, actually. The, the Flaming Ball, pretty interesting. But where is it going to go? Okay, so that's that for now. There may be some controversial comments about that. I should have used the original. But hey, you know, Rush chose to move on from that original to this. So I will do the same thing. So, you know, really like the colors. I do like the colors on this one of the ball, at least better than the more emphasis on red in the original. Yeah, so I do like it. Now, what, what do I like it more than? Okay. It's definitely at least a great cover. So it's going to move a couple of things, right? Uh, yeah, I don't think it's a superb cover. I think I like all of these better. So I'm going to move the debut album down to the It's Still Rush. Hey, that's the first, first record. I think that's where it's going to be. Um, and I'm going to move the counterparts down to the good level ahead of Hold Your Fire because this is a great cover. Greater than what, though? Um, yeah, I'm going to put it right there after Roll the Bones. I mean, as much as as much this not dislike, but just there weren't that many positives that I had for the Roll the Bones cover. It's still a very good cover. It's good. Uh, it's great, actually. Um, so I think it's better than the Vapor Trails cover. I think the Vapor Trails cover is better than the Counterparts cover. So I think it's right where it needs to be. Okay, so the next one that we're going to discuss is feedback. Let me put uh, feedback here for now. Feedback is interesting. Because, you know, it's an album of covers. <laughs> We're talking about album covers, and it's an album of covers. All the songs are covers. And it is an interesting album cover. I mean, I barely noticed the 2112 logo at the top. Yeah, I barely noticed that. And there's, there are a couple, there's some things going on here that make it a pretty interesting cover. Um, the way the, the fonts that are used, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of trippy. You know, kind of like from the songs of the time during, you know, we're talking mostly 60s, I think. Late 60s, these songs are. Mid to late 60s, I think. Maybe song from, maybe one or two songs from the 70s, I'm not sure. They're just old songs. Well, yeah, probably 60s, because these are songs that were impactful in in the boys' career. In the boys' early, early days. I call them the boys because they weren't Rush when they were being influenced by these songs. But the cover, uh, yeah, it's pr it's pretty pretty spe pretty good. I like it. Uh, very colorful. Like I said, it's kind of trippy. The tr the fonts are kind of trippy. There's some symbols there that you know. There's an eye at the bottom that I didn't notice was there before, 
and yeah there's a lot of colors going on there it's 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 a pretty album cover it is very pretty it presents a little bit of a quandary for me because it's you know it's a a cover listing all of the songs on the cover i mean can we say that that is creative or that they didn't know what to do so they just put the songs on the cover <laughs> um i don't i don't know i don't know what the thinking was whether good or bad for this cover but i think it's pretty good i'm going to say it's at least it's at least a great cover of a record i'm going to say i think i do like it more than the roll of bones cover yeah so let's do some housekeeping right now we're going to move <laughs> hemispheres down to the it's still rush yeah it is so it's good it's still rush and we're going to move vapor trails down to the good level yeah this is going to be a great album cover feedback will be i think 2112 is going to hold its own i do like it better because there's some there's some serious symbolism going on there in 2112 you know it's an epic record so not everything can can is going to beat it yeah is it better than the Signals cover? Hmm, that is interesting. It, I mean, I think it looks prettier. There's something about that box, that square box of the picture of the hydrant and the dog. Uh, there is some, it is somewhat impactful. Yeah, I think that is. And I think, yeah, I think the Rush Roll the Bones cover is also better. I do think... The feedback cover barely ekes out vapor trails. Barely. So I'm going to put it here. Because even though there's, a, you know, it's trippy, you know, and all, it, has, it does have a lot of colors. It, you know, the design is pretty unique. And I think there was a lot of thought that went into making that record. It wasn't the typical Rush record. So, yeah. The more I think about it, I think the more I'm liking the Roll the Bones cover. <laughs> Maybe it should go a little higher. We'll see. But we have a couple more to rank. Let's go to Snakes and Arrows. Let me put it down here for the moment. You'll also see it on the side. Let's look at that cover. Snakes and Arrows. Now, Snakes and Arrows, I think, is as trippy an album in general as any album. I mean, this album to me was kind of weird. It's kind of like an alter ego of Rush, this album was. I think it's very unique musically. I think it's pretty different than anything else they've done. So, the, you know, thematically, you know, I think there was a lot of darkness there. But, okay, but we're talking about the album cover. And, you know, there's some history here where this is one of the few album covers that Hugh Syme did not pick. This is more Neil Peart picking the cover. And... You know, the more I look at it, I see other things there going on uh, throughout all of the surroundings of the cover, and you have you know a lot of a lot of symbolism going on there. And there are obviously snakes and arrows. And as interesting as I think this album cover is, it's also not one of my favorites. And you know, it might rank a little low, but not the lowest. You know, I do. Actually, you know what? It is pretty low. <laughs> it's not one of my favorite covers. I think it's actually, it is better than the debut album. Everything is better than the debut album. That's what's, that's what's going to be. Uh, but, you know, at least the Hemispheres album cover is better. So it's it's way down there as far as covers go. It's not that I don't like it. I just like all the other ones better for one reason or another. And the Snakes and Arrows cover is really, really busy. I mean, I've looked at it many times and looking at it right now, I'm seeing things I didn't see before. Yeah, it's really it's a really busy cover. So, yeah, I think I'll spend some time looking at it another time. But I think I like all these other ones better. OK, so last but not least, we have Clockwork Angels. This is also another red album cover. Uh, looks, and but it, as red as it is, it's you know, hold your fire was red, but they don't look anything like each other. Nothing, like completely different. 
And I do really like this album cover quite a bit. I, I don't I don't think it's my favorite. I don't think it'll do that. But yeah, I think uh it, you know the the numbers that are used uh for the clock, you know, those alchemy symbols and the fact that the time in military time is 2112 and you know that red that's a beautiful red. And you know the clouds, you know, there's like a swirling there in the middle. Um yeah. It's beautiful. The fonts that I use for Rush Clockwork Angels. Yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful album cover. I like it a lot. And I think this album cover will go up to at least... It's, it's definitely great. It might even be... Is it superb, though? So I have to think, do I like Presto, that album cover, better than the Clockwork Angels album cover? Actually, I do think that I like Clockwork Angels' album cover better than Presto's. Yeah, so that's going to move some things. I'm not going to move it yet. Do I like it more than A Farewell to Kings? I think I do like it more. How about more than Moving Pictures? Uh, actually, no. I I don't. I think that's where I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna stop. I do like the moving pictures cover better than the Clockwork Angels. So, let me put this out here for for the moment, if it'll let me. Nope, it won't. Let's see. So, that's not a problem. So, I'm going to move power windows down to the, it's still rush level. Oh, no. Wow, really? Is it that low? We'll see. Uh, feedback down to the good level. And Presto down to the great level. And I said that I like the Clockwork Angels cover better than a Farewell to Kings. Yeah. Because that, that red, man, it's, it's just luscious. And, uh, you know, the 2112 reference there. It's just, you know, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. So. As of right now, my initial impressions, this is my favorite, this is my ranking of the album covers from least favorite to favorite. And looks like right now, Grace Under Pressure is number one. And the Rush debut album is last. Now, that's what we're going to have to figure out here. Is everything in its right place? So I'm going to take a look. I'm going to start from the bottom and go up. So we have the question is, does hemispheres belong way down there? Um, do I like it more than the power windows cover? You know what? Th this is going to be shocking what I'm about to do. Now that I'm looking at it, I think <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I think I like the hemispheres album cover more than the feedback cover. Look at that jump. So I'm going to bring Hold Your Fire down to the It's Still a Rush level. That's an amazing, that is unprecedented. Never has something jumped so high from after the initial ranking. That's incredible. So, dang. Hemispheres jumps up to the good level. Nice going. Okay. <laughs> now, let's look back at the It's Still a Rush level. I think Rush is still the worst cover. The debut album, I think Snakes and Arrows is just is better. And I think those two are set. Now, going back to Power Windows and Hold Your Fire. If I'm looking at them back to back like they are, do I really like the Hold Your Fire cover better than the Power Windows cover? I don't know. For some reason, I do. I do like it better. That's it. That's interesting. And yeah, going up the ladder here, I do think I like the counterparts cover better than the Hold Your Fire cover. What about Vapor Trails? And you know what? I think I do like the Vapor Trails cover better than the feedback cover. <laughs> okay. I think the last six records are where they need to be. That's correct. Um, Hemispheres and Vapor Trails. I think 
that's fine. Yeah, I do like the Hemisphere's cover better than the Vapor Gel's cover. Yes. Do I like vape, uh, Rush Roll the Bones better than the Hemisphere's cover? <laughs> oh, this is this is interesting. You know what? I think I have Hemisphere's all wrong. Yes, I think I did. This is going to be yet another. I can't I can't even believe I'm about to do this. I like the Hemispheres cover more than the 2112 cover. <laughs> so I'm going to jump it up to the great level ahead of 2112. That bumps roll the bones down to the good level. That is amazing. So where did I have Hemispheres before? I think it was at. 18 so hemispheres jumped from the 18th slot all the way to the ninth slot holy moly no the the no the the 10th slot yeah the, the number 10 that is outstanding it really is kudos to hemispheres uh, looking at it now yeah I, I do like it more than i thought i did yes i like it more than 2112 cover um, okay, so I think the bottom two tiers are set. Now, let's talk about 2112 versus Signals. Um, the album covers, if I think about them. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. 2112, that's a pretty good cover. It's actually a great cover. So it's going to stay where it is. Uh, presto, okay, here we go. Presto and hemispheres. Looking at them, I'm okay. I'm trying not to think of the music. Which one do I like better? Yeah, and um, yeah, I think I'm gonna for an, I'm gonna stick with this. I think the Presto album cover is better than the hemispheres album cover. Amazing. I think that's a I think that's a very good cover. I do. Uh, it's beautiful in its black and whiteness <laughs> and not color. I think if it was color, I think it would not be as good. I think they did right by going with black and white. Okay, so let's go to the superb level and let's see what we got here. Um, man, hemispheres. I'm just, I'm so impressed. What a jump. Um, Farewell to Kings. I really like that cover. Clockwork Angels. Yeah, I think I do like it a little better than this cover. It's it's because of the the red. I mean, it, it's just that might be the best hue of red I've ever seen. Um, moving pictures, the symbolism of that cover. I mean, they nail it, and that's why I think I'm going to move it ahead of Permanent Waves, so it'll jump, it'll switch places in the superb level. Yeah, I think that's right for now. <laughs> okay, we're going to the elite level and fly by night. I just, that's one of the greatest covers of all. I mean, that's really good. I, I don't think it's going to stay at least in the four spot. Uh, Crest of Steel. That to me is an underrated record in every aspect. And I'm going to say, even in the album cover, it is also underrated. That is a spectacular illustration. It really is. There's a whole lot of detail there. And the fact that it looks kind of abstract, not totally clear. You know, it draws you in and, you know, in your imagination. And, you know, what is the character looking at in its prism it's it's like it's somewhat of an action picture you know there's menacing there's menace swirling around that character just by the picture just by the drawing it's it's just it's a great and you know i don't think the fonts are the greatest but they're good enough it's just that 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 illustration of the evil character there you know, it, it's, it's very well done. So I'm going to say that spots three and four 
or where they need to be. All right, so the battle for first place is on. We got Test for Echo at number two and Grace Under Pressure at number one. Like I mentioned earlier, I was shocked that there was more to that picture, that Test for Echo picture, than I thought. There's people on there. I didn't know that. And I've always been impressed with the Grace Under Pressure cover. Always. But you know what? I think the Test for Echo cover is better. I do. And I think, yeah, I think when there's actual people in a picture, it for some reason, it makes it more relatable. So if there were no people on those rocks, on those stones, yeah, I think Test for Echo would be where it is. But because of that little detail, I'm going to move it to number one. Yes, I am. This is amazing to me. The Test for Echo cover. Test for Echo cover. I think it's my favorite Rush album cover. I did not know that. I thought it would be something else. Uh, Grace Under Pressure. I'm not surprised it's one or two. That's a great, great cover. You know what, folks? I think we got it. So, in the official, I'm going to call it, this is the official ranking for my uh, Rush album covers from least favorite to favorite. So, at number 20 in the It's Still, in the it's still Rush tier, number 20, last place, is the Rush debut album. Number 19, Snakes and Arrows. Number 18, Power Windows. That might be a shocker for many. At number 17 is Hold Your Fire. Then we got in the good tier. Number 16, Counterparts. Number 15, Feedback. Number 14, Vapor Trails. Number 13, Roll the Bones. Then in the great tier, number 12, Signals. Number 11, 2112. Number 10, Hemispheres, which made an unprecedented jump from number 18 to number 10. That's impressive. Then we got number 9, Presto. That was the great level. In the superb level, we have at number 8, Farewell to Kings. At number 7, Clockwork Angels. Number 6, Permanent Waves. Number five, Moving Pictures. And then at the elite level for Rush album covers, number four, Fly By Night. Number three, Caress of Steel. Old timers making it to the elite level. Number two, Grace Under Pressure. And the number one best favorite album cover by Rush, according to me, Omar of All About Rush is Test for Echo. All right. So there you have it. There is my ranking, as you can see it here, of my of Rush's album covers from worst to best. I hope you enjoyed that as far as how I came about how I came about the ranking, how while I'm doing it in real time, my opinion changed and you know the incredible jump that Hemispheres made, that was outstanding. And the fact that it, there are things I didn't notice in the pictures that were there all along, like for Test for Echo, there are actually people there, which I didn't know, which I bumped up the 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 likability of that album cover. Test for Echo, number one. So I thank you for watching it this far. I uh, hope you subscribe to my channel if you think is if I earned your subscription. Uh, give it a like and share if you if you want to as well. And you can support me also on my Patreon page, and there'll be a link in the description for that. Anyway, I appreciate you checking this out and staying this long to watch. Uh, see how my brain works in ranking these, these records. And hope to see you again in the next video.